My people, recently I took a look at the underscore 76's task run of the entire community center completed in like an hour and a half. Today I am returning to his YouTube channel to steal more content. He took on Shawnee Dew's Skull Cavern Challenge from a while ago, and we're gonna see how a task would do in a challenge that I failed miserably at. Let's get into it. All right, we've got Shawnee's Skeleton <laughs> Caverns Challenge run, uh, as Sean so affectionately calls the Skull Caverns about 50% of the time. All right, if you wanna pause and read the description here, it is for you. I read through all this. It basically says like, I did a freaking good job, but I could do better. Now, if you don't know what Sean's Skull Cavern Challenge was like a month ago, it was basically Shawnee Dew put out a farm for anyone to use. You had one day of preparation and then you had to go as low in the Skull Cavern as possible. A bunch of people grinded this out, myself included. I got to floor 343 as my best attempt, and I think Habu got like 551 or something like that, so like, I, I anticipate a pretty decent attempt from this task guy. Alright, well, let's get into it. Look at the- already the speed of the menuing. Alright, so he loads in on this farm, and so Sean has already set all of this up. That is the fastest mail open I have ever seen in my life. And we have everything from all the chests already. Wonderful. All right. So this whole first day is supposed to be prep. A lot of people spent all of their time trying to get as much money as they could to buy as much iron and coal as they could for explosive ammo, because explosive ammo was super helpful. And also, I don't know if you saw, but there were a couple of hidden chests around. So there's one behind this tree right here, which he opens in one frame to get an additional jade. And there's a lucky ring in here, which he does take also. All right, so he goes to the mines to get the better boots and then he gets the Skull Cavern key immediately. And we're going back here on our prep day to get a single Omni Geode, okay. This is already interesting because I saw the chapter of this first day is only four and a half minutes long and most people's are like close to an hour. Okay, so he gets a diamond, Omni Geodes, and now we're going to town. Okay, so we're gonna go, oh, are we? Gonna go into the museum? Oh yeah, it's seven o'clock. All right, so I'm assuming he waits here for a little bit. <laughs> He's, you know, it's not like time is precious on this prep day or anything like that. Okay, so he goes in the museum at 8 a.m. and he collects a bunch of rewards that Sean had like waiting for you. So he gets two triple shot espressos, some farm warp totems and a magic rock candy, which is super helpful. All right, so now he's going into the mutant bug layer. This is again, I'm assuming for a thing that Sean had prepped for us because Sean, you know, being the, the sneaky boy that he is, hid a bunch of crystallariums that had jade in them. So he goes in here, harvests the prepared jade, and breaks them all for a total of like 30, for an extra 30 jade, which he's gonna trade for staircases in the desert later. <laughs> I have never seen anybody clear hay with a dagger before. <laughs> it's one super straight column of fast walking speed. And so he comes to this chest and gets five spicy eel. You literally can't even see his dagger break this fiber. It is just like, it's like he just walks through it and it just collapses in front of him like an all-powerful god. All right, so we went to the desert, go into the desert trader, of course, got to pet the camel. And he bought a bunch of staircases with the jades and also a bunch of uh, mega bombs. Now he's going into the skull cavern just to open the door to save some time tomorrow. You actually, the challenge doesn't start until the next day. Oh, <laughs> okay, we're going to bed. Wait, okay, so we're going to bed. It's been four and a half minutes. It's 1020 in the morning. Underscore said absolutely F the rest of this day and any sort of preparation I could get out of it. I have everything that I need. And again, if you didn't see my community center task video, what he's doing right there is walking into the top of the bed. He's taking steps, which impacts a bunch of different stuff. Last time we saw it, it was used to impact whether or not it was going to rain. But this time it's to guarantee that he has the best luck possible. Teleports to the desert. You can see this timer on the top up here. This is one that's at like 11 seconds. Sean had imposed a rule on the competition that you only had 21 real life minutes in the mines. All right, and we are underway. And he's down to level seven already. Okay, so <laughs> I can already sense a little bit of a theme here. A lot of stuff in this game can be predicted. Um, ladders, drop shafts are among them. And so I'm assuming that most of these floors are gonna be pretty quick. Now he said in the description that you can't predict what is going to happen on a floor until you get there. Uh, so uh, sometimes he gets a drop shaft, sometimes he just gets a regular ladder. It's run, immediately go to the rock that has the ladder or the drop shaft and use it. 
But I think sometimes he's just using ladders on levels that like a human would play out. But because he knows that the closest ladder is like on the far side of the level, he's choosing to ladder himself, which is really interesting. This is a little ridiculous. It is now 7 a.m. and he is on floor 75. One in-game hour, including the time it took to get here. Okay, so we're going to see him sit there and pause again. He did that in the community center run. When you sit and pause, somehow that has... Uh, look, I'm not going to try to explain it. Somehow that has an effect on, like, future floors or on the next floor. Do you remember when you were a young, blossoming Stardew Valley player, and you received a challenge from a cryptic blue man by the name of Mr. Key. And he told you that if you were able to make it down to floor 100, he would be so proud of you. The mightiest warrior, potentially, that he has ever seen. And you would be awarded with, like, snake milk or something? I don't know. And it took forever. Remember, I my first Skull Cavern trip, I got to floor six. Yeah. Like six. I didn't get to six and die. I got to six and I ran out of like energy and I just, I gave up. I ran away. It took me so long to get to floor 100. Underscore's task has gotten here in two minutes and five seconds and it's 7.10 in the morning. 15 levels. It might seem like the only RNG manipulation that's going on is trying to figure out where the drop shafts are, but I would bet that he's figuring out how to make like the floors spawn that have the best drop shafts. Also, look at this absolute lunatic running around at one HP. Like I know, I get it. It's pre-programmed, it's predetermined that he's not going to hit anything, but still it makes me so stressed out. You never die to fall damage, which is helpful. Dude, look at that too. Cause he sits and he pauses. Right, he pauses on certain floors to make the next floor be a good one, but doesn't it still kind of freak you out to see this serpent flying at him and he just stares into the eyes of death and says, I am not afraid of you, green serpent man. Oh, it's like the last available frame. I'm starting to wonder why he even bothered getting all the mega bombs that he bought, because <laughs> it doesn't seem like he's gonna need them. The way the humans would do this is so different. It's so, so different. It's all about just like trying to get as many clusters together as possible and shoot an explosive ammo. But I guess when you know exactly where everything is going to be, it's not that challenging. You know, he's getting a lot of these treasure floors too, which I bet is one of the outcomes that he's looking for because they're always guaranteed to have a ladder really close. And there's actually so few ladders on the level that they end up being really, really nice because every single one of those rocks on the level, at least one of them is guaranteed to have either a ladder or a drop shaft. So it's always good to break those rocks. Case in point. Okay, it's also funny to me to see that even when he has the extra time to get closer to the ladder, he's still clicking it as absolutely far away as possible. It's a little eerie when you look into green Shawnee Doo's eyes and you know that a human soul is not behind them. I guess that's normally the case with Sean though. <laughs> what? That doesn't even make sense. Cut that out. Bing. All right, so as of the six minute and 23 second mark at 10 o'clock in the morning, he's on floor 343, which was the best of my like six attempts. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> Dude, wait, I have been sitting here watching seven straight minutes of the exact same footage, and then for some reason on this floor, he, he decides to go all wacky with his inventory. Look at him. <laughs> Did the robot get bored? Oh my god. Oh my god, that was it. That was the only rock that has been broken up until this point that didn't have a ladder, and it was because it was in the way. Look at it. Bop. <laughs> Every single other rock this run contains exactly what this guy's looking for. <gasps> oh my god, right, like back to back with the other anomaly, a single explosive ammo shot. <laughs> oh shoot, oh shoot, look at that. Look at the drip. No wonder he's been opening every single one of these uh, chests, dude. I was wondering why. It's for the drip. I wonder if we'll be spending the rest of the run turbaned up. Oh, uh, get absolutely used, you iridium bat. Sitting in the middle of the roads, asleep at the wheel. Underscore won't stand for it. Hmm? Hmm? Why no do drop shaft? There must be a better 
more powerful drop shaft. I could feel it. I could feel it in my bones. I am the Tass. All right, also at some point we like totally blew past Taboo's best attempt. So that's pretty nifty. And we are over, just a little over halfway done through the challenge. And it's 1 p.m. I just checked chat. I don't know if you saw that, but I just looked over and looked to see what people were saying in the chat. And there was no one. Coffee wouldn't dare put that in the video though, because that's evidence that I read my chat. Although I guess it is for the first time in 16 minutes. Wait, is the sound for smacking the ground with a hammer and falling from a drop shaft the same? Listen, listen. Your patukus is the exact same as the hammer. God, what a mighty tukus the farmer has. <gasps> I... Oh, the blue cowboy hat has been obtained. A new era on the run. We are now into the 700s now. I don't actually know what the deepest any human has gotten, but it feels like we might be getting close. Oh my god! And I, I was talking and I missed the end of the blue cowboy hat era. Have you no loyalty, Tass? Tassman underscore? I, I get nervous every time that we enter one of the treasure rooms now that we're going to see the end of the hat. Our only hope is that he finds another white turban. I will be holding my breath anxiously. You know what? You want to know how I feel after 15 minutes of watching underscore do this run? 15! Floor 700! Give it up for Floor 700! Wait, wait a second. That bat is red. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, you can see it. You can see it right there in the thumbnail. What floor do red bats appear in the Skull Cavern? Blade made this kahoot. Here it is. What floor do red bats start appearing in the Skull Cavern? Floor 880? And he's on 895. There's your evidence. If anyone was trying to say that Kahoot from November was rigged, here it is. And boy, are they terrifying. Look at that. Look at this sucker go. Oh my God, he's schmoving. He had on this floor the option of ladder or drop shaft. What did he choose? Other drop shaft that I've revealed for myself. Uh-oh, he's out of staircases. What's he gonna do? He's out of staircases. Okay, he doesn't seem that stressed about it. Oh. He's done. He ended on floor 1000. He ended on floor 1000 with three and a half minutes left in the competition. What an absolute flex. God, that is absolutely nutty. All right, before we go, I did want to take a quick look at this video because it's like a minute long and it's very interesting. Stardew Valley Slingshot Minigame 412 score TAS. I want to see if you go to the Stardew Valley Fair, just how nutty can you be? Oh my God, it's aimbot. <laughs> is he get? Is he gonna get every single target? I mean, like, duh. But it feels like when I play this, it feels like it's not possible to get every single one. Okay, he <laughs> makes it look a little bit easier than it is. So 103 multiplied for the perfection and the accuracy. Wow. For reference, let's see how good I can do. All right, baby, I'm ready for it. I'm getting every single one. Oh God, it's on pull backwards. It's on pull backwards. <sighs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's on pull backwards. That does not count. Here we go, now we're talking. I'm flawless. No! No! No, please! Oh, come on! I didn't think they stayed for that long. I thought I lost my chance. Oh, oh. No, come on, dude! I so got that. I so got that. Oh, oh yeah! Who wants some? You? Yup. Oh, 
<laughs> okay. 87 of like 104? Okay, that doesn't feel that bad. It's probably better than a lot of you guys can do, but you're gonna roast me anyway. That task guy is cheating, man. It doesn't count, right? 